What up, world? It's your boy Jeff, aka Cool Boy Jeff, right here. This is the only place you can find a way, Mr. Wave 804. Back again with another video right here. We're gonna go ahead and talk about the icon, the legend, Tupac Shakur, ladies and gentlemen. We're gonna talk about the part where, um, I think it was on September the 20th, September 27th, once it was 1992. Yeah, 1992, okay. Uh, Tupac was basically dropped from Minister Society. Alrighty, and then he was sitting here in this interview to explain his side of the story. Because you already know that the Hughes brothers had put out um, uh, interviews with Vlad. I think the most recent one was Alan uh, that just did the interview. And he spoke on his part as far as like what had happened and stuff like that. So we're going to talk about Tupac and um, his side. So we're about to go ahead and get into it to this legendary interview, this conversation. So like, comment, subscribe to the channel hit that bell stay updated all videos are dropping this channel so you won't miss a thing and uh yeah man it's really exciting so i'm welcoming all tupac fans all fans around the world to watch this moment to see his part of it of course this is the uh the adventure spot you know what i'm saying you know thug life type pop so let's go ahead and get into it okay yeah uh, Ask me about the Hughes brothers. Hey yo, I just want to say, Tupac was different. Like you know how most rappers they'll stay away from questions or don't, none of that. Yo, he said, yo, just go ahead and ask me about them niggas. I don't even want. It. Come on, man, let's give you something better to do. Let's talk about this. Let's talk about the Hughes brothers right on top. Pac was different, bro. Different. Wait, 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 wait. Meet that hey, Okay. I'll take the questions. All right. But yeah, you're supposed to be a minister society. But, but I wasn't. Oh, yeah, talk about, talk about. Nah, you had your test, man. <laughs> I was supposed to be a minister society, right? I went and everything. They got the deal because of your boy. You know, they, they was my niggas that used to do all these videos for me. They was the niggas that was talking that you should help your black brother shit. And I helped they punk ass. You know what I'm saying? And was helping them all the way. They got a little movie deal. Try to act white on me. You understand me? And thought I was going to choose a career before I choose my motherfucking principles, my manhood. So I said, okay, cool. Fire me from this $100,000 movie because I ain't going to play no gangbanger who's a Muslim. There ain't no such thing. I refuse to play parts that don't exist. I will be a young nigga, but I will be a real young nigga. You know what I'm saying? That's going to that's gonna make me different than all these niggas that's taking parts. If it's about the money, I might as well stay a drug dealer. You know what I'm saying? It ain't like that. So fuck you, Hughes brothers, for doing that. Then I leave. They fire me over the air. On okay. Now, I just want to take a pause. What he said earlier, basically, about the whole part of Sharif, right? Remember, Sharif was the, he used to be a game banger turned Muslim. If you ever seen that video, if you ever seen the movie Minister Society, there is nothing but a storyline. Kane explains it, but it's really no storyline, you know? Excuse me, anything he did in the hood, whatever, what made him be who he was, it was no upbringing from there, okay? Tupac, as we know, his part, that would, that was not him, all right? Let's, let's just keep it a being. His, his, for what he was aiming for was too big and a little bit too much that they would have to put in the movie. And as far as him being let go... Alan Hughes basically explained the guy who was like the main producer because he heard about what had happened when Tupac had walked out. This is when they said they let him go. And and when it happened, it happened over air, but Tupac didn't like that. So he's going to explain a little bit more, but I just want to fill y'all in on that. So that part, Sharif, Tupac, his for, for what fits him, would not been that role at all. On TV, on MTV, they say Tupac fired for threatening the director. What really happened, let me tell the world. He said, I said, you acting like a bitch. He said, you acting like a bitch. I said, well, goddamn, if I'm a bitch, smack a bitch. Mm. You feel me? He said, well, if I'm a bitch, smack a bitch. And I stepped towards him. You feel me? But he a bitch. That's real. And I ain't. That's real. <laughs> feel me? So the nigga fired me. They did their little million dollar movie i ain't sweat him the whole while they was filming the movie even though i was in la the whole time didn't touch him because i ain't want nobody think it was because of the movie and i'm not jealous y'all handle y'all business i can understand that and i can respect that no matter how much funk we got you a nigga doing your business you do it 
As soon as the movie was wrapped, though, it's all good. And I met the motherfuckers at the Spice One video for Trigger Got No Heart. And as sure as Spice One was singing how the Trigger had no heart, Tupac has no heart. What's that say? Heartless. And I beat them motherfuckers down. I threatened. I said, both y'all niggas get out the car. We about to box. His brother, his twin brother got out and start running. That's on my mama. He ran. Free twins. He ran. If you had not seen that interview with Alan Hughes, when he said his part, he said he was at the hill and he was jogging and he was trying to go towards uh, 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 the video security, which it was none. But when they seen what, you know, when the guys was down there was at the other brother, I think it was Albert Hughes, they was looking at him from up afar, so they was about to go ahead and get him. So... He ran on his brother. But, anyway that he tried to flip it, he ran on his brother. But, it's all over and done now. But, yeah, this is what Tupac talking about. Ran. Two. The other brother got out, started talking shit. He walked away. I socked his punk ass and started throwing things like I'm born in the box. The partner he had with him started begging me to stop beating him up. But I kept beating his punk ass up. Then, instead of fighting me like a G, he ran. Now, I can't help it if some niggas that was on the scene beat his ass for running. That was something separate. You understand me? And I can't help it if they were screaming thug life as they did it. That ain't my fault. That's just how shit went down. You understand me? But now niggas need to start living what they preaching. They want to make gangster movies. They better live a gangster life. That's real. Or make movies about what the fuck they know about. This whole thing with the, with the Hughes brothers, and, and you, I, I don't know if this is true, but this was also written in the article, that you heard on MTV News that you lost that part. Mm -hmm. And that whole story, was that all true? It's all true. Only thing that's not true is that um, my friends beat them up. The only thing that wasn't true is that I got boys to beat them up. The true part is that, true to the matter, uh, me and them had a problem, and they got that, and he got his ass kicked. You know, I didn't, I didn't jump on him or anything. I, it was the, it was both brothers standing there. It just so happened that one of his brothers was a coward, and he ran. I can't help it if I was fighting two guys and one ran. Just because he, that was his brother, he should be trying to put in jail for running. You know what I'm saying? I'm fighting two guys, he runs. So, you mean, I mean, I'm not stopping because your brother's a coward, but I felt like they disrespected me in, in the biggest way because everybody's out there talking about black people unite and get together, and how could you do that? How could you? All I was doing was talking, you know, was saying I didn't understand this role, and just because you felt, he just straight told me in words that I, I embarrassed him in front of his, his, his cast, and, and I've taken away the respect of a cast and a director. And I was like, you guys don't even know what you're doing. You're playing a big game in Hollywood. You, you're reading people's notes and you don't even know what you're doing. And I'm not going to let that happen. You know, I said, we can be Hollywood brothers or we can be real brothers. And if you want to take this the Hollywood way, it's cool. All right, you got me. I can't do your movie. But if you want to take this the brother way, I can see you on the streets. And if you're making movies about brothers from the streets, you reap what you sow. Mm. You know, they want to talk about menace to society. I'm a menace to them. For every day I'm still in this business, you know, and then they try to blackball me. They just speak about being so black. That's such a, you know, that's such an Aryan thing to do, you know what I'm saying? To try to blackball me. I mean, look at that. You know, to go to other, you know, that just seems so, ugh, and disgusting. So it makes me antagonistic, especially since I was like, I was over. After we fought, I was like, fine, it's done. You know, they fired me. I, I feel like I've redeemed myself. We all even, but then they started pressing charges and talking all that madness that I'm hearing. So to me, it's like they can sue me a million times. They could put me in jail a million times, but they will never crush me. They can never defeat my spirit. And if it takes a million ass beatings, I will give them boys a million ass beatings. But they will respect me, and they won't be parading and doing this artificial shit that they do on TV. Excuse my language. Yeah, but I just can't stand it. I can't stand for somebody to try to represent the young black male and be artificial and be against him in real life, you know? Yeah. And then I think one of them said, oh, you know, that's it for him in Hollywood. Yeah. And then John Singleton said, well, it's not as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, I mean, how dare you say that's it for, for you and Hollywood? Even in, my, even in my most angriest moments, I didn't wish for them to never make another movie. You know, I mean, to me, they're, they're comrades in, in the business. I feel like they, I, I went to see them movie like eight times, and they fired me from their movie. But I, I wanted to support her, you know, it wasn't that deep to me, you know. But to, to Luke Cowards, it's that deep. So to me, I'm going to make it that deep. So this will be my, my lifelong ambition in this business to make sure that they fully understand me. No matter how many times we have to talk, we're going to keep talking until they understand me. Because I'm not going anywhere. 
whether Hollywood doesn't give me another movie or not, I'm not going to go anywhere. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and so it's like, they got to have to see me at another day. And they can sue me and have bodyguards or whatever, but they got to see me. And so they should come real. Now we can, because I would, I, had, I would love it to just to discuss me. this matter with them. But the more they try to like be something they're not, the angrier I get, you know. And that's what's really happening. Meaning you didn't show up on time. I didn't show up on like time. That. I didn't have the concentration I should have had. Being mad at Spike Lee and all of those people, all of that. Dissing the Hughes brothers. I wish I didn't do that. Have you made peace with them? Not personally, but I'm trying to. Hmm. Okay. So as far as what we can see here, you can see the growth within Pot. The early years. You know, uh, and also doing an interview uh, uh, after he got out of uh, prison with the lady. I forgot her name, but um, you can see the major growth and maturity because, again, he wants to apologize for what he's done, <clears throat> you know, and make amends. So, you know, everybody wants to grow and do something better because, I mean, you know, the older you get and things that you look back on, it's like, dang, I wish I could change that. So that's how the way he felt, and also look like that's how the Hughes brothers see to it as well. You know, so they understand that. So I'm just glad that everybody involved. I mean, again, Tupac, you know, so rest in peace is not here. But as far as that, the Hughes brothers, they definitely understand about how much he meant. The things that had happened was some things that they could have wished they could have changed. Um, so on and so forth. So check out those Vlad interviews. Shout out to DJ Vlad, man. He got some videos out there too with the Hughes brothers. And um, yeah, man. Anywho, y'all let me know what y'all think in the comment box. Hit that bell. Stay updated on all videos that drop on this channel. It was dope to sit here and talk about this uh, video and watch it with y'all. And um, yeah, man. Until next time, y'all be safe. Peace. It's the